and we say yeah. I welcome everyone to our workers training tonight in Jesus name yeah. and I see the air of preparation and expectation for the retreat I didn't hear you yeah. are you preparing yeah. are you expecting yeah. let's go all out and do everything we need to do and bring uh, people and as we bring the people, the Lord, and enrich their lives and bless them and reward you for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you once again for our brothers and sisters, our leaders, everyone. We're asking, Lord, that you impact every life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak your word to every heart. We'll not be tired of hearing your word. And you will not be tired of blessing us. We we'll pray, Lord, that your word will be a blessing to everyone tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. I see I heard the voice of the Lord. And the voice said, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Here is the Almighty God having a mission. The Almighty God having an assignment. The Almighty God having a commission. And he says, who shall I send? And then after you seen the pronoun I telling us God is one, he now says, or who will go for us? Us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is the plural form of God. That means we have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Ghost, and the three are united in one. And it's the Trinitarian call. It's the Trinitarian Commission saying, Who will I send? Who will go for us? And then Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Let's look at it from verse 1. It says in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one having six wings, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. He's talking about the prophetic future at the millennium time when the whole earth, every town, every city, every village, and the whole community, the whole world will be full of the glory of the Lord. And the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the seas cover the ocean. And then it says in verse 4, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, then said I, he saw the majesty of God, he saw his own mystery. He saw the greatness of God, he saw his own smallness. He saw the bright holiness of God, and he saw his own uncleanness. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken in with tongues from up the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. He had complained, he had confessed that he had unclean lips. His words will not be witchy, his words will not be purifying, his words will not be energizing, his words will not be transforming. And so the coal of fire from the altar of God came through that angel, the seraphim, and touched his leaves and laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, 
this has touched thy leaves thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged he had been saved he had been preaching before this and prophesying before this time but now a new experience came to him it was an experience of purging an experience of purifying an experience of sanctifying an experience of cleansing and this second work of grace as we know it now in the new testament came upon him and after that because god will use a holy vessel a righteous vessel a purified vessel after that the voice came to him and i heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us then said I here am I send me I pray that tonight we'll hear the voice of the Lord we've heard it before as I had heard it before and we have served the Lord before I say I'd be serving the Lord before but now a new voice came now he responded to that voice and he went for the Lord to do the will of God and to preach the word of God we're looking at the word tonight responding to God's concerned voice like I said responding to God's concerned voice like Isaiah God was concerned he was concerned about the perishing he was concerned about the ignorant he was concerned about those who are in darkness and because of that concern his voice related that concern God's concerned voice and now Isaiah responded here am I, send me. And we want to respond like I say. Here am I, send me. Responding to God's concerned voice like I say. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our consecration, a recognition of God's compelling voice. Our consecration in recognition of God's compelling voice number two the condemnation for rejecting God's convicting voice the voice comes and then somebody rejects that and he goes in some way as if God has said nothing the condemnation for rejecting God's convicting voice number three the commendation for responding to God's convincing voice. I say I was convinced that God had a work to do. And God condescended by asking, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And he responded because of the convincing voice. And he said, Here am I, send me. And I pray the Lord will move every one of us to respond appropriately to the voice of the Lord tonight and for the rest of our lives in Jesus name I said in Jesus name number one our consecration in recognition of God's compelling voice I read the story to you already a true story a lively story it's story that is still true today a story that is applicable today there are three things here number one the vision the vision he saw the vision of the Lord number two the voice he heard the voice of the Lord number three the vow he made a vow I will do it I must do it I have to do it I pledge my time I pledge my life I pledge my present to the future and I will do the will of God the voice the vision the voice and the vow number one there he saw the vision he saw the vision and he saw as he saw the vision of the holiness of god of the majesty of god of the greatness of god then he cried out woe is me for i'm undone i'm a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips and then in that vision the angel came the seraphim came and took the uh, coal live coal from the altar of the lord and touched his lips and in that vision he was cleansed he was purged vision is very important 
if we don't see the mission of the Lord and hear the voice of the Lord, we don't move, we don't do anything. Life is stale and life goes on as it was, it is, and it will ever be. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 29, reading from verse 28, from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 28, where there is no vision, the people perish. Life goes on with everybody as if nothing is happening. We have not seen the vision of those who are dying. We have not seen the vision of the Lord. And we have not seen the vision of Calvary. We have not seen the vision of the concern in the heart of the Lord. And therefore we just go on from day to day doing nothing. Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's why the Lord himself has given the promise that he will pour out his spirit he'll save us he'll sanctify us he'll baptize us in the holy ghost and when he baptizes us in the holy ghost we're beginning to see the vision of the lord is painted in our heart and the vision says come over to macedonia and help us and the vision says people are perishing everywhere and the vision says do something make a mark through your life acts of the apostles chapter 2 verse 7 17 acts chapter 2 verse 17 and it shall come to pass in the last days says the lord i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your sons and your daughters shall prophesy when the holy ghost is poured out young people will feel the fire Young people will have the fervency. Young people will have the desire, the passion, and the stirring of their heart to proclaim the gospel. And your young men shall see visions. And your young men shall see visions. Those who don't see any vision, they do what others do. They go where others go. They walk where others walk. They tread where others have trodden. And they see no vision. Their life, like it was yesterday, it will be today it will be forever members of the church ministers in the church who see no vision things will go on regularly they go to meetings they come out of meetings there's nothing to jolt them there's nothing to stir them up because they have not seen any vision but it says when we receive the holy ghost the young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams acts of the apostles chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 9 acts of the apostles chapter 18 reading from verse 9 it says then spake the lord to paul in the night by a vision in the night by a vision you understand he had gotten born again in chapter 9 and he saw the vision of the lord he had the voice of the lord and on and on he had been going and he had been walking came for the Lord but so many years after now he still saw a vision by night there are some people the vision they saw at the beginning that's all the vision they have ever seen and there's no other time they have seen a clear vision and a compelling vision from the Lord but Paul the apostle he saw this vision again be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee look at this for I have much people in this city the vision concerns evangelism the vision concerns saving the laws the vision concerns reaching out like never before whatever we have done before we get the vision again and we launch out and we do the work of the lord number one he saw the vision number two he heard the voice he heard the voice we're looking at isaiah chapter six and i'm reading from verse 8 Isaiah chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 8 and I heard the voice of the Lord and I heard the voice of the Lord and I heard the voice of the Lord there are many voices that are speaking 
and the voices are driving us there and pulling us there and drawing us there but when you hear the majestic voice of the Lord when you hear the glorious voice of the Lord and when you hear the compelling voice of the Lord you will know that this is different and your life is about to turn around and a new thing is about to start in your life a new assignment is about to come when you hear the voice of the Lord and I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us I pray we will hear the voice of the Lord I said you will hear the voice of the Lord Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 Paul the Apostle was never the same again because he had the voice and the voice said something definite and he followed that voice and he responded to that voice in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 and I'm reading here from verse 3 and he and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven and he fell on the earth to the earth and heard a voice saying and heard a voice saying that was the voice that eventually led to his conversion that was the voice that eventually led to his commission that was the voice that changed the direction of his life you see when you hear the voice of the lord something will change but if you go from day to day you read the bible you can't hear his voice you hear the singing of the choir you can't uh, hear his voice you hear the preaching of men of god women of god and nothing happens uh, you cannot uh, you cannot have a change of direction it means something is wrong somewhere when people heard the voice of the lord their lives turned around and he said so so why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou lord he knew he was lord but which lord is this and the lord said i am jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he trembling and astonished said lord what wilt thou have me to do and the lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do but seven and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice and seeing no man hearing a voice and not understanding the meaning of the voice and even if they had the voice because they could not discern they didn't change they didn't have a commission they didn't do anything but paul the apostle had the voice he understood the voice and a change came in his life i pray that you'll hear the voice of god your spirit will hear the voice of God. Your heart will hear the voice of God. Your inner man will hear the voice of God. Your life will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. He made a vow. He saw the vision. He heard the voice. And then he made a vow. He said, here am I, sent me. Here am I, sent me. We have to make a commitment to the Lord, a vow to the Lord. And we have to say, Lord, I heard your voice and I'm responding to your voice. And because of that voice, here is what I'm going to do. Jonah chapter 2, and I read from verse 8. Jonah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Jonah realized eventually that he had been listening to the wrong voice. He, he realized that he was observing lying vanities. He had forsaken his own mercy. I will sacrifice in verse 9 unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. I will pay that which I have vowed. As a prophet, I vowed 
as a preacher i vowed as a messenger of the lord i vowed and now i'm running away because of the challenge of the day and he says i will pay that which i vowed salvation is of the lord and the lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out jonah upon the dry land and the word of the lord came unto jonah the second time saying arise didn't you say you will pay your vow didn't you say you will do what you have promised to do then arise go unto Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee I will pay my vow you will pay your vow thereby many are going to get saved you will pay your vow thereby many are going to turn to the Lord you will not allow anything to discourage you you will not allow anything to stop you make a vow make a pledge make a consecration pay your vow look at judges chapter 11 judges chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 30 judges chapter 11 we're looking at verse 30 and jephthah vowed a vow unto the lord and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. Look at verse 35, the last two lines of verse 35. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. What an example. And what a precedent, what an excellent thing, a pattern that Jephthah have left to every one of us. I open my mouth to the Lord. There may be storms in the way, difficulties in the way, danger in the way, and there may be some rough roads on the way, but I remember I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and I will not go back you will not go back and look at Isaiah I say oh, put his mouth to the Lord here am I sent me that was in chapter 6 of Isaiah and then he went on and went on and went on doing the work of the Lord and the Lord always had him available always available always faithful he'll give him the word and then he will give the word to the nation he'll give the word to the people he even wrote that down because he had said here am I sent me and the Lord sent him and he never looked back the Lord has sent you you will never look back I will never look back I've opened my mouth to the Lord and I will not draw back we're coming to point number two now the condemnation for rejecting God's convicting voice the condemnation for rejecting God's convicting voice and the children of Israel at the voice of the Lord in fact at one time the evil said yes we're going to do everything you have commanded us to do but eventually they didn't carry out their vow they didn't carry out their commission they didn't carry out their assignment you will not fail like the Israelites failed you'll not be a disappointment like the Israelites were a disappointment what you have opened your mouth to the Lord to say I will serve the Lord I will preach the gospel I will bring others to the Lord the Lord will give you abundant grace and you will do it in Jesus name Deuteronomy chapter 9 we're reading from verse 23 Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 23 likewise when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea saying go up and possess the land which I have given you then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God and ye believed not him and nor hearkened to his voice nor hearkened to his voice you had the voice you could have gone you could have done it but you did not and ye have been ye have been rebellious against the lord from the day that i knew you thus i fell down before the lord 40 days and 40 nights as i fell down at the first because the lord had said he will destroy you 
because the Lord had said they rejected his voice they were not doing what he told them to do and he said he would destroy them look at first Samuel rejecting the voice of the Lord for Samuel chapter 15 we're reading from verse 1 for Samuel chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 1 Samuel also said unto Saul the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord the voice of the words of the Lord look at verse 19 he appeared to have heard he went out and you would have thought he went to carry out the commission of the Lord the assignment of the Lord look at verse 19 wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord Saul why have you not obeyed the voice of the Lord and did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord actually if you read the whole story he went out and he did a little but was a little it was partial obedience he didn't carry out everything the Lord had commissioned him to carry out and the Lord said that was evil in the sight of the Lord and Saul said unto Samuel yea yes I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and I've gone the way which the Lord sent me and brought Agag the king of Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites but the people took the spoil sheep and oxen he was the king he had authority over the people he will not exercise his authority he had control over the people he will not direct the people according to the word of the Lord he allowed the people to do whatever they wanted to do and he himself brought Agag the king of the Amalekites and he said the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal he had an excuse to make the excuse makers today I pray you'll not be an excuse maker because you see those who make excuse today will be excused from the reward when we get to the day of reckoning if you're always an excuse maker i would have done it but for this i would have gone there but for this i would have evangelized but for this if you're an excuse maker you'll be excused from the reward on the final day i will not be an excuse maker I will not be an excuse maker verse 22 and Samuel said as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord you see that always is the voice of the Lord and he wants obedience to that voice it says but behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hack in than the fat of rams for rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft he said so you know what your rebellion your disobedience your partial obedience is as bad as witchcraft and where the witches go to spend eternity that's where you go to spend eternity and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry the people that say idol forever god forbid i will never worship idol that's good but you know stubbornness in staying away from the will of god in the sight of god is as iniquity and idolatry partial obedience not going the full length and not doing everything god has called us to do properly appropriately in the sight of god is iniquity and idolatry because that was rejected the word of the lord he has also rejected thee from being a king i pray god will not reject you pray for me god will not reject me and god will not reject you in jesus name jeremiah chapter 3 jeremiah chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 25 jeremiah chapter 3 verse 25 we lie down in our shame and our confusion covers us 
For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even until this day, listen to this, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. I want you to check up your own Christian service and check up your own life. How much of the voice of the Lord are you obeying? How much of the commission of the Lord are you carrying out? How much of your time, how much of your, how many of your days are you spending in carrying out the voice of the Lord? What the voice had said. Look at chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 9, reading from verse 12. Chapter 9 of Jeremiah, verse 12. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken, that she may declare it for what the land perishes and is burnt up? Like a wilderness that none passes through. The Lord says, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein. My voice, his voice is very important. A concerned voice, a compelling voice. A convicting voice a convincing voice and even though it was a convicting convincing voice a compelling a concerned voice they have not obeyed my voice neither what daring but they have watched after the imagination of their own heart and have and after bearing which their fathers taught them a tradition of idol worshippers it says that's what their fathers taught them therefore thus says the lord of hosts and the god of israel behold i will feed them even this people with warm wood and give them water of gall to drink judgment was coming upon them why because they will not obey the voice of the lord there is condemnation there is damnation there is punishment, there is judgment for the people that reject the voice of the Lord. You say, maybe they didn't know it was the voice of the Lord. Maybe they were ignorant. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. I read from verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we well, will not hearken unto thee. The need was the voice of the Lord. The need was a commandment of the Lord. The need was a commission coming from the Lord. And they said, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever sin goes out of our own mouth. We'll exalt ourselves as God. We'll replace God with our own self. We'll displace the will of God and then we'll replace that with our own will. We're going to do what we want. That was terrible. And there are people today that are acting like that although they are not saying it with their mouth that here is the voice of the Lord here is the word of the Lord but they will not do the word of the Lord but they are so self-centered and self-willed that whatever has come out of our mouth that's what we are going to do look at verse 22 of that same chapter in verse 22 so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse and without an inhabitant as at this day because ye are burnt incense and because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord you see that you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law. 
nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil is happened unto you as at this day. Rejecting the voice of the Lord brings judgment. Rejecting the voice of the Lord and not amending our ways brings uh, calamity upon us unnecessarily. God doesn't want to do it. In fact, He has promised us good things. Only He wants us to mend our ways. He wants us to correct our ways so that evil will not come upon us. I see I had the voice of the Lord, and you have heard the voice of the Lord. Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. And you are saying today, Here am I, send me. Can we say that together? The Lord has sent you already. The work of God will prosper in your hand. If we have abandoned the work of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, let's mend our ways. Let's correct ourselves and say, Lord, I renew my vow. I renew my consecration, my commitment. I will serve the Lord. You will serve the Lord. He will bless you. I said, He will bless you. And it will take calamity and punishment and it will take oppression out of our midst in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 26. Jeremiah chapter 26. We're looking at verse 13. Therefore now, I mean your ways. That's what God is looking for. He's not interested in punishing us. He's not interested in oppressing us. He's not interested in condemning us. And uh, every, con every condemnation will be taken away as we amend our ways in Jesus' name. Therefore now, now, now at this time, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Amend your ways. I made your ways. Look at the voice that has been speaking to you. Do you hear and forget? Do you hear and reject? Do you hear and abandon? Or do you hear and say, Lord, I will obey? And the blessings of obedience will come upon you. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. The Lord will repent of the calamity, of the judgment, of the punishment they are pronounced against you. Number one, our consecration as we recognize God's compelling voice. Number two, the condemnation for rejecting God's convicting voice. Number three now is the commendation for responding to God's convincing voice. The commendation for responding to God's convincing voice. As I think about the commendation of those who responded to the voice of God, I think of one, the angels, two, Abraham, three the apostles number one the angels and the lord wants us to respond like they responded like they are responding look at psalm 103 psalm 103 i'm reading from verses 20 and 21 psalm 103 verse 20 bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word you see how those angels respond immediately god says here is what you do the angel will not waste time the angel will not delay the angel will not find any excuse anywhere anyone god says the angels it says the excellent strength they're doing his commandment they're hearkening on to the voice of his word one the angels two abraham look at genesis chapter 22 and see how abraham responded to the voice of the lord in genesis chapter 22 and I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after, those thing, after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. 
and he said take now thy son thine only son i seek whom thou lovest and get thee into the mount of moriah and offer him there for a bunch offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell thee of and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and i seek his son and cleave the wood for the bunch offering and rose up and went unto the place of the which god had told him think about that kind of obedience this was the only son ishmael had been driven out of the commandment of the lord this was the only one remaining and he had waited for this child for 25 years and he got this child in his old age and god even commented your son whom you love he loved him very much and yet when god demanded for that isaac he gave up the isaac unto god look at verse uh, uh, look at verse 14 this is genesis uh, chapter 22 and i'm reading here from verse 14 and them called the name of the place jehovah jerry as it is said unto this day in the mount of the lord it shall be it shall be seen and the angel of the lord called unto abraham out of heaven at the second time and said by myself have i sworn says the lord for because thou hast done this sin and has not withheld thy son thine only son that in blessing i will bless thee in multiplying i will multiply the seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and the seed shall possess the gate of his enemies in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed read out the rest that's good do that again do it for the third time because thou hast obeyed my voice look at the angels they obeyed the voice of the lord look at abraham he obeyed the voice of the lord let's look at the apostles now acts of the apostles i'm reading from chapter 5 acts of the apostles chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 28 and verse 29 acts of the apostles chapter 5 verse 28 and verse 29 saying did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold that was filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than men we ought to obey god rather than men all of us who are together tonight are we going to have this same uh, this same commitment in our heart towards god i said are we going to have this same commitment in our heart towards god let's say that together we ought to obey god rather than men please read it in unison one two three go the lord has called us to obedience he has favored us he has specially selected us and he calls us deep and live bible church he gave us the name never mind what many people might be saying it came this way it came this way it came that way god gave us the name and god has made you a part of this a glorious church and i pray that this opportunity the lord's giving you will never slip away from you in jesus name and all the blessings deeper blessings higher blessings and greater blessings you will give to faithful people you will be a partaker in jesus name we ought to obey god rather than men will be obedient to the lord to the voice of the lord all the days of our lives in jesus name and when we obey the lord the blessings will flow 
and the blessings will overflow and i pray that your own life will not have to be looking and looking before we see the blessing the blessings will overflow in your life in jesus name on the basis will be the commandment of the lord i've shown you the angels i've shown you abraham i've shown you the apostles how did they obey the lord number one immediate obedience immediate obedience that was prompt that was prompt that was prompt immediate obedience the moment the lord speaks to an angel immediately he obeys and the moment the lord spoke to abraham early in the morning immediately he obeyed and the moment the lord spoke spoke to the apostles immediately they obeyed immediate obedience in front of that boat prompt 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 obedience immediate prompt immediate obedience prompt obedience number two independent obedience independent obedience when god calls a gabriel or a michael any of the angels go and do this independent obedience you'll not go and ask another angel what do you think about this the lord is sending me to go to i say the lord is sending me to go here to go there should i should i not independent obedience when god spoke to abraham how did he obey did he go to sarah go to this one go to um you know the head of the chief of his servants should i do should i not do it immediate obedience and independent obedience in front of that personal personal they took the commandments of god in a personal way and they stood on that commandment of god personally and they said whatever others do and whatever others do not do here is me i'm offering myself unto the lord independent obedience personal obedience number three increase improved obedience increasing improved obedience you look at the case of abraham when the lord told him to drive away hagar he did it but the lord had to say that you know do it abraham don't let it be something even in your side about your about it, that woman send her out but in the case of isaac that he even loved more than hagar immediately he acted on it you see the people of those days of bible days they were improving every time they were increasing every time the way they respond today is faster than the way they respond five years ago because they had increasing obedience in front of that you put the word progressive progressive they are progressing they are progressing they're not retrogressing they were not going back they were not slowing down they were getting faster and faster number one immediate obedience prompt number two independence of independent obedience personal number three increasing obedience improved obedience progressive number four impressive obedience impressive obedience it impressed the lord an angel has just message heaven is far from the earth he dashes out and he comes to earth he does what he's called to do and immediately after he's gone back to god to respond to god to report back to god impressive obedience and abraham uh, did what the lord told him to do take your son your only son and sacrifice him to me on the mountain i will show you and he took the wood he took the servants he took the knife he took the fire he took everything he laid i seek down it impressed the lord and the lord called from heaven and he said abraham abraham because of this that you have done in blessing i told you before i will bless you i will multiply the blessing upon your life impressive obedience praise worthy obedience praise worthy because it's impressive and god was uh, impressed about that he praised him that's how the lord wants us to respond to the voice of the lord that you are not delaying you are not wasting time you are not thinking it through you are not running it over in your mind number five impartial obedience impartial obedience impartial obedience means that is pure and proper 
pure and proper and there is nothing here that i forgot the knife i forgot the fire i forgot the wood and the isaac i'm actually to bring i brought the wood i brought the fire i brought the knife i brought everything but um i see there is i seek is nowhere to be found they brought everything and it shows you the sincerity of the heart when the lord has called you and he has said this is what you do and you don't leave anything behind anything undone and everything is pure and everything is proper because you have impartial obedience and then you have incorruptible obedience incorruptible obedience nothing could stain the offering of abraham and in the case of the apostles nothing could divert them nothing could distract them nothing could destroy the way they wanted to go because they have made up their mind i will obey the lord i will serve the lord persecution may come imprisonment may come the pharisees may roar like lions and there may be difficulties and dangers on the way yet i'm going to have an obedience that is incorruptible that the pharisees cannot tarnish that religious people cannot tarnish and that all the things he may say or write about them will not tarnish incorruptible obedience persevering obedience they persevered and persevered and persevered until they actually finish what the lord had called them to do number one is immediate obedience prompt number two independent obedience personal number three increasing improved obedience progressive number four impressive obedience praiseworthy number five impartial obedience is pure and proper number six incorruptible obedience is persevering number seven irreversible obedience permanent i have laid my hands on the plow there's no thinking it over anymore already we've left home abraham had left home with isaac and as they were going isaac said my father my father here is the wood here is the fire where is the sacrifice and that question could have been like a dagger in the heart of abraham but i've laid my hands on the plow i've said yes to god i cannot say no i'm going this way and i'm going to the mountain top where i will offer what he requested of me and there is no reverse gear this one is irreversible permanent and he said my son god will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice look at the apostles as they imprison them as they beat them as they chastise them they went on obeying the lord we will go on obeying the lord nothing will stop our obedience nothing here will set us back to where we're coming from and the blessing of the lord will enrich your life as you obey the commandment of the lord in jesus name give me good good amen deuteronomy chapter 28 deuteronomy chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice unto the voice unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth the lord will promote you the lord will exalt you the lord will bless you above everything you ever imagined in jesus name in this life he will bless you in the life to come he will reward you look at verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee amen and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god hearken to the voice of the lord thy god it says in verse 7 the lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face 
they shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways the lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto and he shall bless thee in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee the lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the lord thy god and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the lord and they shall be afraid of thee and the lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body barrenness is gone in jesus name and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and in the land which the lord thy god swear unto thy fathers to give them the lord shall open unto thee his good treasure and the heaven to give the rain in the land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt learn not of many nations and thou shalt not borrow and the lord shall make thee the hedge and not the tail and thou shalt be above only above only and shall not be beneath if thou hearken unto the commandments of the lord thy god which i command thee this day to observe to do them the lord has sent us and we're going to obey him we we'll come back to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Everybody. Again again you have opened your mouth to the lord and you are not going to go back and the blessings of the lord and the energy the power the grace the strength of the lord will be upon your life and the work of god will prosper in your hands in jesus name let's rest up and tell the lord you've opened your mouth to the lord say to the lord make it personal say to the lord make it prompt say to the lord make it praiseworthy say to make it pure and proper say to the lord make it persevering say to the lord make it permanent here am i lord send me and as the lord sends you the work will prosper in your hands in jesus name